um, the decision not to do a sworn interview with the president. It's really the only subject I want to talk to you about, sir. Why didn't you subpoena the president? Uh, well, at the outset, after we took over and initiated the investigation. If, if I could ask you to speak on the microphone. Yeah, of course. Uh, at the outset, after we uh, took over the uh, investigation and began it and uh, pursued it, quite obviously one of the things we anticipated wanting to accomplish that is getting, having the inter interview of the president. We negotiated from, uh, with him for a little over a year, and I think what you adverted to in the appendix lays out uh, our ex expectations as a result of those negotiations. But finally, uh, when it became, we were almost towards the end of our investigation and we'd had little success in pushing to get the interview of the president, uh, we decided that uh, we did not want to uh, exercise the subpoena powers uh, because of the necessity of uh, expediting the end of the uh, investigation. Was that, was that, excuse me, did you want I was to going to say, uh, the expectation was, if we did subpoena the president, he would fight the subpoena, and we would be in the midst of the investigation for, for a substantial period of time. Right, but, but as we sit here, you've never had an opportunity to, to ask the president in-person questions under oath, and so obviously that must have been a difficult decision. And you're right, Appendix C lays that out, and indeed, I, just, I believe you described the uh, the in-person interview as vital, that's your word. Um, and of course, you make clear you had the authority and the legal justification to do it. As you point out, you waited a year, you put up with a lot of negotiations, you made numerous accommodations, which you lay out so that he could prepare and not be surprised. I take it you were trying to be fair to the president. Um, and by the way, you were gonna limit uh, the questions when you got to written questions to Russia uh, only. And in fact, you did go with written questions after about nine months, sir, right? And, and, it, it, and the president responded to those, and you have some hard language for what you thought of those responses. What did you think of the president's written responses, Mr. Mueller? Uh, certainly not as useful as uh, the interview would be. In fact, in fact you, you pointed out, and, and by my count, there were more than 30 times when the president said he didn't recall, he didn't remember, no independent recollection, no current recollection. And I take it by your answer that it wasn't as helpful um, that's why you used words like incomplete, imprecise, inadequate, insufficient. Is that a fair summary of what you thought of those written answers? That is a fair summary. And I, pre I presume that comes from the report. And yet, sir, and I ask this respectfully. Uh, by the way, the president didn't ever claim the Fifth Amendment, did he? I'm not going to talk to that. Well, I, from what I can tell, sir, at one point it was vital, and then at one, another point it wasn't vital. And my question to you is, why did it stop being vital? And I can only think of three explanations. One is that somebody told you you couldn't do it, but nobody told you you couldn't subpoena the president. Is that right? No, we understood we could subpoena the president. Rosenstein didn't tell you. Whitaker didn't tell you. Barr didn't tell you you couldn't. We, we could serve a subpoena. So the only other explanation, well, there's two others, I guess. One, that you just flinched, that you, you had the opportunity to do it and you didn't do it. But, but, sir, you don't strike me as the kind of guy who flinches. I hope not. Well, then the third explanation... I hope not too, sir. And the third explanation I can think of is that, is that you didn't think you needed it. And in fact, what caught my eye was page 13 on volume two, where you said, in fact, you had a substantial body of evidence. And you cite a bunch of cases there, don't you, about how you often have to prove intent to obstruct justice without an in-person interview. That's the kind of nature of it. And you, and, you, and you use terms like a substantial body of evidence, significant evidence of the president's intent. So my question, sir, is did you have sufficient evidence of the president's intent to obstruct justice, and is that why you didn't do the interview? Uh, there's a balance. In other words, how much evidence you have to satisfy uh, the last element uh, against how much time are you willing to spend in the courts uh, uh, litigating uh, a, uh, uh, the uh, interview with the president. And in this case, you felt that you had enough evidence of the president's intent? We had to make a balanced decision in terms of uh, uh, how much evidence we had compared to the length of time it would take and to sir, do because that. I have limited time, you thought that if you gave it to the Attorney General or to this Congress, that there was sufficient evidence that it was better than that delay. Uh, can you state that again? Well, that it was better than the delay to present the sufficient evidence, your term, of the President's intent to obstruct justice to the Attorney General and to this committee. Isn't that why you didn't do the interview? No, the, way, the reason we didn't do the interview is because of the length of time that it would take to uh, resolve the issues attendant to that. Thank you, sir. Hey, NBC News viewers, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel.
Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.